My favorite place is Osterhout Log Cabin. If you hold the belief Osterhout Log Cabin was built in 1796 by William Osterhout, a loyalist and former soldier in Butler's Rangers who first settled Niagara in 1786 and ten years later came to Scarborough, then you would need to acknowledge the indigenous land it stands on and the settling of Scarborough upon traditional territory and the stories that come with that history. This is an important place to me because within a short walk it incorporates the history of my home as I live within 10 minutes of the log cabin. It also incorporates nature and art. Geographically, it leaves the cuts of the shapings of earth by ice and the fire of war across Lake Ontario. The Scarborough Bluffs are layers of the work of moraines and a historical dig of artifacts. There are two schools of thought regarding the natives that populated Guild property. One, there was a fairly uniform culture among the agricultural groups in southern Ontario after a portion of the Pickering population expanded west and conquered Glenmire people. But others reject this conquest theory and offer explanations such as alliance formation for trade and warfare. The land was purchased by a couple and turned into an artist's community known as the Guild Inn. It is now under the University of Toronto. It was Elizabeth Simcoe, the wife of Lieutenant Governor of the province, who suggested the name of Scarborough, and in 1793, Mrs. Simcoe and her party took an outing on horseback and by foot to the peninsula opposite Toronto, known as Toronto Island, and to the beach along Lake Ontario. After rowing a mile, we came within sight of what is named in the map the Highlands of Toronto, she is quoted as saying. The shore is extremely bold and has the appearance of chalk cliffs, but I believe they are only white sand. They appeared so well that we talked about building a summer residence there and calling it Scarborough." End quote. Osterhout Log Cabin is situated on the Guild Inn Park on the Scarborough Bluffs at Kingston Road and Guildwood Road. The age and location of Osterhout Log Cabin makes historical documentation difficult to locate. It is generally thought to have been built by Crown patentee William Osterhout about 1800 or surveyor Augusta Jones about 1793, but there are no archival documents supporting either theory. Robert Wilkinson is said to have occupied the property as early as 1837, but little is known of the man and he was never the property owner. It is also possible that the building was erected early in the 19th century by a squatter. The building is 16 by 22 feet and is a single room cabin and has a large cooking fireplace at the east end and a door on both the north and south sides. The existing roof is a replacement of the original, but the cabin was most likely built as a single story structure. It has eight logs high, the architectural style being quite primitive. The logs were left round and unfinished on the exterior and are square keyed at the corners. This predates other log structures in the area and suggests that the cabin was built very early in the 19th century. A large a large percentage of our history comes from studying Tabor Hill. No log houses were excavated, but a number of tools and bones were recovered, as there could be no doubt that these were Iroquois people buried long ago at a celebration of the Feast of the Dead. Every dozen years or so, however, as the supply of firewood near the villages became depleted and the fertility of the soil of their cornfields was exhausted, they found it necessary to transfer to new sites. Often they did not have to move very far to find a suitable place for their new village, but the general drift was northwards, away from the heavier clay of Scarborough and the Toronto area to lighter soils, which could be more easily cultivated with their primitive digging sticks and wooden hoes. Native territory is still honored today as seen at the Rouge Conservation. O oh, great spirit whose voice I hear in the winds and whose breath gives life to all the world, hear me. I am a man before you, one of your many children. I am small and weak. I need your strength and wisdom. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever behold the red and purple sunsets. Make my hands respect the things you have made, my ears sharp to hear your voice. 
Make me wise so that I may know the things you have taught my people, the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. I seek strength, O Creator, not to be superior to my brothers, but to be able to fight my greatest enemy, myself, make me ever ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eye, so that when life fades as the setting sunset, my spirit may come to you without shame.